we do have to talk about, obviously, the horrific shooting in Buffalo. Um, we won't name the shooter. The shooter's name is out there. I didn't put it in my notes here. I don't have any intention of remembering it. Uh, he's from Conklin, New York, which is a few hours away from Buffalo. This guy uh, targeted this specific store in Buffalo because the zip code had the highest percentage of black people living in it that was within driving distance of him. And so, you know, this was obviously, there's no sugarcoating it. There's no talking around it. This was obviously an act of white supremacist terrorism, plain and simple. Sure. sure. You know, I mean, there, there is nothing else you can really say about that. Um, do you have any first thoughts on that before we, we get into some of the, the deeper stuff here? Well, I read I read most of Greenwald's article about this. Yeah, he has and... a bad habit of dropping like three thousand word articles two hours before we go on air. And so I read the headline because I'm on his Substack, but I did not have a chance to read it. Uh, okay, at this point, he's just trolling. At this point, Greenwald. That's what it seemed trolling. like to me in the headline, honestly. Gre- uh, oh, okay, okay. So he he has a valid overall point in this article he's making the point that um you know when things like this happen there's a rush to attach it to people who um are your political opponents even if they have not advocated violence he brought up the case of the guy who you know opened fire on the on the republican softball team who was like a huge Rachel Maddow fan who was saying, you know, a rational person would attach that to Rachel Maddow. So I guess he's kind of referring to Tucker Carlson being being blamed for this because it goes on the show a lot. Well, we um, will play a clip, yeah, um, because people have tied uh, Tucker Carlson's sort of white replacement theory dog whistling to this guy who subscribed to, to that I, theory. I, okay, Th- this is how I feel very often with both Glenn Greenwald and and Jimmy Dore. Um you know these these guys in a way they're like they're like Lenny Bruce late Lenny Bruce where Lenny Bruce was just really pissed off at the system and was just going to attack the system. Uh, as, like that just became what he did. Like he wasn't really doing comedy anymore. He was simply just attacking the 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 establishment of the system. Um, look, Greenwald's not wrong. Like, is is the press does the press hide from covering when, for example, in the New York City subway, we just had a, a black shooter who was motivated by an anti-white uh, kind of ideology, and we've had a lot of. Uh, shootings and, and uh, violent acts that were motivated by that. You know, we're, it's kind of going back to uh, the 70s where you had the Black Liberation Army assassinating police. Like, we've had some of that now. And is he right that they don't like to cover it that way? That they don't push that out there in the same way that they do the narrative when it's when it's coming from an ideology that the press isn't as sympathetic to? Sure, yeah. It just didn't feel to me like an article that needed to be written right now. I, I mean, I, I guess if I if I saw more of what he's talking about connected to this, I'd feel like that was a more important thing to say at this moment. But I'm not seeing a crazy amount of that. I mean, yeah. I mean, by by media liberal standards, I'm not seeing everybody falling all over themselves to talk about Tucker Carlson. I mean, I'm sure if you turn on Joy Reid, you're getting that, but uh, that's Joy Reid. I, I, I'm not I'm not seeing that as the general take. I'm seeing a lot of headlines about it being a tragedy, about this guy being a white supremacist, and fair enough. So I, at that point, so what are you doing? Are you trolling? Like, why? Well, that's what it struck me as. Why did you as. drop that right now? That's what it struck me as. And, you know, I say this as someone who places Glenn Greenwald top five journalists in the world so I say I. this I'm so not a guy I. who goes out and trashes yeah. Glenn Greenwald no. all the time no. I say this with love and respect for him and everything well well that's why in He's a way done. I was like I was like and also dude, you, also you have so many enemies do you need to pick that fight the day after this happened well also he's not Jimmy Dore like you know comics like Jimmy Dore are more or less and I mean this in an endearing way they're more or less professional trolls that's kind of what a stand-up comic is is a troll 
Greenwald, a guy of his stature, I mean, he has tremendous stature as a journalist. This guy has broken arguably two of the top five most important news stories in the last 50 years. I mean, this guy, this guy, you know, is a giant in his field. This seemed like stooping. Yeah, it's it like and I thought the exact same thing. I started reading it. I knew I didn't like I said, it's not it. that the points he's making are wrong, per se. It's just you sort of wait th- until the blood is, is, is mopped not off the, the floor of the supermarket before you would go and make that point. It's it, not it, you know it's I mean? not necessary. It's not yeah. necessary at this moment, because, again, I'm not seeing enough of what he's talking about to insert that as so central to the conversation at this moment. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I got distracted. I didn't mean to smile there. It looked like an awkward smile. I saw your cat walk out the door behind you in uh-huh. the background, and I thought it was my cat. So I looked behind <laughs> and thought my cat was coming in. That was my smile there. I wasn't I wasn't laughing. This this is this is not a, a laughing matter here. So anyway, what what um what what Greenwald wrote that article in response to probably had a lot to do with the fact that people were tying Tucker Carlson's messaging right. to this shooter. And they uh, the specific clip of uh, a Tucker Carlson show, this wasn't his primetime show, I believe. I believe this was his daytime show. Um, the clip that they are tying this to um, is a clip that I'm going to uh, queue up uh, right now just so we can have the context here, and then we will talk a little bit um, about this. And look... I should say before we we actually play this, you know, um, we talk about you know how Russell and I are, but I won't speak for Russell, but I'm certainly you know, a, a, a basically a free speech absolutist, right? Um, and this isn't necessarily about free speech, although I do think like, in order to really uphold a First Amendment spirit, we ought not like blame people who express political opinions when someone. You know, some nut out there takes that expression as that, license that was that was that people. was his overall point. Right. That what was that? overall what Glean, Greenwald was saying. Well, I mean, I think that's right. I mean, because that, that look, every, it's not Rachel Maddow's fault that that, that lunatic shot up the like softball this. field. You know, right. it's not her fault. Right. And, right. you know, it, it, what, what, what about, you know, the Unabomber? So do you blame environmentalists? Right. Exactly. I mean, you can't really have a free society that way. You can't right. have free speech right. if you're going to all of a sudden everybody every time some whack job, you know, uh, interprets something as as licensed to go out there and do something insane. We shut down that person. So anyway, I just want to preface this by, by saying that, uh, and then we will talk about this more. I'm laughing because this is one of about 10 stories that I know you've covered um, where the government shows preference to people who have shown absolute contempt for our customs, our laws, mm. our system itself, and they're being treated better than American citizens. Now, I know that the left and all the little gatekeepers on Twitter become literally hysterical if you use the term replacement, if you suggest that the Democratic Party is trying to replace the current electorate, the voters now casting ballots, mm. with new people, more obedient voters from the third world. But they become hysterical because that's, that's what's happening, actually. Let's just say it, that's mm. true. Mm. If, if, look, mm. if this was happening in your house, if you were in sixth grade, for example, and without telling you, your, kid, your parents adopted a bunch of new siblings and gave them brand new bikes and let them stay mm. up later and help them with their homework and gave them twice the allowance that they gave you, you would say to your siblings, you know, I think we're being replaced by, by kids that our parents love more. And it would be kind of hard to argue against you because look at the evidence. So right. this matters on a bunch of different levels, but on the most basic level, it's a voting rights question. In a democracy, one person equals one vote. If you change the population, you dilute the political power of the people who live there. So every time they import a new voter, I become disenfranchised as a mm. current voter. So I don't understand why we don't understand this. I mean, everyone wants to make a racial issue out of it. Ooh, the you know white replacement theory. No, no, no. This is a voting rights question. I have less political power because they're importing a brand new electorate. Why should I sit back and take that? The power that I have yeah. as an American guaranteed at birth is one man, one vote, and they're diluting it. No, they're not allowed to do that. Why are we putting up with this? All right, now, now Tucker Carlson, in a very loose sense of the word legit can maybe uh, make this argument because 
he seems like a daughters of the American Revolution motherfucker if there ever was one. Like his family might go back to the people who were complaining about the immigrants coming in from Italy, from Eastern Europe, <laughs> from Ireland. He his family was probably on this side of this issue back to the colonial <laughs> era. These immigrants are taking away our power. Um, you know, whereas somebody like Pat Buchanan, who's descended from Irish immigrants, it was always kind of hilarious when he would say pretty, pretty, they didn't call it replacement theory then, but he was pretty much saying the same exact shit Tucker Carlson is saying. Um, so, you know, with a, with a, somebody who's not as much of a, of a wasp as he is, um, I, I would basically go to that. Well, this is exactly what they were saying a hundred years ago. You know, this is, yeah, German and Scandinavian immigrants who were already here who didn't want the new irish and italian and jewish immigrants coming in um but with carlson i mean i i don't know what his family history is i'd be surprised if that motherfucker doesn't have any you know people who fought in the revolution in his family he, he seems like that's the pedigree that he comes from well i mean that could be explaining uh where he's coming from I think more relevant, though, than where he's coming from is where are a lot of his viewers coming from and where was this shooter coming from, right, in terms of when they absorb, you know, segments like that, ideas like that. And, you know, look, uh, we talk about class a lot on the show here. And, uh, you know, you sometimes, you know, we get called class reductionists, which I think is, you know, an overused term in general, although it is a real thing. You cannot you know, blame everything on class disparity, sure. income and wealth inequality. Sure. There are cultural prejudices that exist yeah. that, that sort of transcend, you know, um, matters of, you know, class economics. Sure. Right? Um, the, the question though is not, see what, what, what I would say is not that, um, not necessarily that income and wealth sort of inequality, uh, causes racism, but I think it makes existing racism a lot worse and a lot more dangerous. Yes. And if you notice what Carlson said in that segment there, he gave the example of if your parents adopted all these siblings and now they start giving them your bikes and giving them more allowance than you. In that example, he is metaphorically talking about what? They're not just coming here. That's not. It's not just bad because they're here. It's bad because now they're going to get stuff that you had. They're going to come here and they're uh -huh. going to start taking your stuff. They're going to start uh -huh. getting government benefits that maybe you don't get or maybe you're going to get less now. They're going to start uh, you know, competing for your jobs and things like that. And so a lot of cultural prejudices are exacerbated by the fact that we live in a country that is just a hyper-capitalist gauntlet where everyone has to scrounge and compete against each other for every single penny that they have. And so that makes um, economic anxiety not necessarily the cause of racism and racial violence, but it definitely turns up the heat under a lot of these people who already may have these racist ideas. And now all of a sudden, whoa, there's someone coming into my town who's going to compete against me for my job or take a government benefit that I don't qualify for, but now they do, right? The liberals, by and large, uh, don't feel that sense of nativism, don't feel that sense of nationalism and fear of the other coming and taking their stuff because guess what? The immigrant's not going to the, the immigrant's not going to take your job as like marketing consultant for Eli Lilly. Right. You know what I mean? So you can afford to be very tolerant and very open minded and very big hearted because it's all theoretical to you. A lot of these guys, and I'm not saying that was what was in this shooter's mind. I'm just saying generally, broadly, I think the, the audience that Tucker Carlson really you know taps into is an audience that, yes, has a lot of these cultural prejudices. And then he uses class resentment to make those things even worse and to right. make it even more potent. Please clap. <laughs> <laughs>